Hello, my name is Annie Smallwood. I'm a designer, maker, researcher and educator and I'm here at Sunnybank Mills. I recently worked on a Crafts Council project called Make Your Future where I was weaving with students in a local school here in Leeds. Today I want to share with you how you can also do some weaving within your own classrooms. So for this project you're going to need a ruler, a pencil, a cardboard shuttle, a small plastic needle, a piece of cardboard, a pair of scissors and some yarn. Your weaving is going to end up smaller than your cardboard, so I recommend that you use around an A5 kind of size loom um, if you're hoping to get some weaving done within one to two lessons. Now we need to make our loom. So you need to measure one centimetre from the top all the way along, like so, and draw a straight line across the top. <clears throat> you then, on the top edge, want to mark off every centimetre. You want to move your ruler down to the straight edge. You want to come in 1.5 centimetres. And then you want to mark off every centimetre. You now want to join the dots up. It's easier if you do them in a diagonal line, going one way to start with. And then again, you want to turn your ruler around and join them up so that you end up with triangles. These triangles are important so they create a groove for which your yarn can rest in. And these will become your warp threads. We now need to cut them out. If you've got a large class, it might be worth um, doing five to six templates and then putting them on tables and then groups of students can then draw around the templates and cut their own triangles out to make their own looms um, to save you a bit of time for preparation. Once you've got your triangles cut along the top, you then need to measure and do the same along the bottom. You can vary the distance between your triangles. Um, I often do between 1 centimetre and 1.5 centimetres because I think that works well for many students. But it might be that you want to make them wider to make it a little bit easier to get in and out of your warp threads or narrower if you want to try and make a more intricate pattern. You now need to warp up your loom so if you hold the end of the yarn with one hand and then you're going to wind it around your loom then lay it flat on the table cut your yarn and tie off the two ends together diagonally across the back and then turn it over. <coughs> you want to make sure that your warp threads aren't too floppy and loose, but also so they're not so tight that the cardboard's beginning to bend. You can use any materials for weaving, as long as they are malleable enough to weave in and out of your warp threads. Have a look around your classroom, see what you've got. Don't worry about buying particular materials, um, but rather find what you've got left over from projects and recycle. So now we're going to begin weaving and we're going to start here at this side and we're going to go over this first thread. The, these are the warp threads and what we're weaving in are the weft. So we're going to go over and under, over and under. All the way to the end. Then you need to push your yarn to the bottom. You can do that using your fingers or with the shuttle. And then you're going to take your end and weave it in four or five warp threads, push it to the bottom and tuck it behind out of the way. You're now going to go back in the opposite direction. So here we've gone under, so we're going to start this row by going over.
and then again push it down to the bottom and you keep continuing to do that. And push it down. When you get to the end, you want to take the end of it and weave it again between four or five of the warp threads, pushing it down and then leaving it to the back of your loom. Once students have explored going over and under and are feeling more confident, encourage them to investigate. See what patterns they can create. What happens if you combine different materials together? What happens if you combine different colours, different textures? What happens if you don't just go over and under, but you maybe go over two and under one? You know your students best. You know which ones will need more support and will benefit from seeing more demonstrations from you. And you also know which of your students would prefer to be set challenges and would prefer to investigate for themselves. Get your shuttle with your next yarn colour on. And you want to follow the direction that the end of the previous yarn has gone. It feels like you're doing it the wrong way, but it is right. So you want to go over and under, over and under, all the way to the end. And it will give you then a complete row that is alternate to the row below. Push it down to the bottom. Again, you want to weave in this tail and put it to the back, out of the way. A common occurrence when you're weaving is that your weaving comes in and you end up with your weaving drawing in into the middle. This happens when you're weaving and you've reached the other side and you are drawing your weft through and you've ended up pulling it in too tight. It starts to draw in this side and causes it to come in. So all you need to do is release a bit of the tension, let your uh, weft just rest against this warp thread and then bring it down. This helps keep the edges nice and straight to this side. The opposite can also happen, that you're left with a large loop at the end that's coming out at the sides, like this. So if this happens, just pull it in a little bit more before pushing it down. Depending on our personalities, sometimes if you find a mistake, some of us can see it and move on and are happy with that. But for other of us, other of us it's harder to do that once you've seen a mistake, it's hard to unsee the mistake. Um, I really try to encourage pupils not to keep undoing their work. Um, if they are struggling with that, maybe pull it out, maybe up to five rows, but don't do too many more than that, because otherwise you can end up with quite a pile of unpicking and not much weaving, like weaving is a very slow craft. As you can see, this piece isn't yet complete, so I'm going to use a finished piece of work to show you how to tie off the ends. Okay, you now have a decision to make. Are you going to keep your weaving on the loom or are you going to take it off? Um, if you have woven with really chunky materials or wide strips of paper, you might find it beneficial to leave on the loom so that it's got a little bit more rigidity to it. However, if you want to take your weaving off the loom, turn your work over, face down on the table, and you're going to cut your warp threads down the middle. Carefully turn it back over. You now need to tie the ends of your work. You need to get two of your ends together, do a single knot against the work, and then a double knot. Take one of your ends over to your next warp thread and tie, and then tie it again. Like this. 
take one of your ends over again and again a single knot and a second knot. Here you go. Your piece of weaving is now finished. We'd love to know how you get on, so please do share with hashtag MakeYourFuture.